In a previous video, we talked about internal rate of return as one of the most popular capital budgeting methods. And most of the time, you get the same solution using internal rate of return as you do using net present value. But when you have certain circumstances, for example, in another tutorial I talked about mutually exclusive projects. If you have two projects and they're mutually exclusive, that is you can only do one of the two projects, internal rate of return may lead to, may give you misleading, a misleading solution. In fact, what you have to do is you have to go another step and you have to compute what we call the crossover rate, the interest rate at which the two net present values for the project are equal. And at a lower interest rate, one project will be desirable. At a higher interest rate, the other project will be desirable. I actually refer to it as the incremental internal rate of return. Because if you have two projects and one costs more than the other, you can, you can look at the incremental money spent and the incremental cash flows. That is, you subtract the smaller project from the larger project, all the cash flows, and you compute the IRR on that separate project. And you're asking yourself, is the extra money worth spending? And if the IRR for that incremental project is higher than your required return, then the extra money is worth spending. Another problem with IRR is the case where you have non-conventional cash flows. And here I have an example. Normally we have a negative cash flow at the beginning of the period and then a bunch of positive cash flows. Here we have a negative cash flow, a positive cash flow, another positive cash flow, and then another negative cash flow. This is going to give us a funny solution. In fact, this is what we this is a quadratic equation. And you may recall from high school math class the quadratic formula where you've got two solutions. And it's easier to see if we look at a graph. And I have um, I've created a spreadsheet here. These are the same cash flows. And I've computed the net present value for the projects at all the different at a bunch of different interest rates. And you do that by I'm um, using the NPV function, but be careful. The Excel the NPV function doesn't actually calculate NPV. It calculates the present value of all the cash flows. So this first cash flow here actually needs to be subtracted out. You want to calculate these three cash flows. So if you look here for this first period, I've calculated the cash flows from B6 to B8, and then I've subtracted out the cost. I've actually added it in because it's a negative number here. So I do that and I copied the formula down. And if you look at this, normally we have a negative cash flow in the beginning and then um, actually we have a negative, we have a positive cash flow in the beginning and then NPV goes down. We had a downward sloping curve. Here it's negative in the beginning and then positive and then negative. So let me draw a graph here. And you can draw a graph using Excel. Go to Insert. And you want to use a scatter diagram. And use one where the lines cross. And here we get this, this curve here. And IRR is where NPV equals 0. So right here and right here are the two net present values that are equal to 0. Well, which one do you use? If we use a required return of 15%, we would reject if we use this IRR. This is going to be slightly slightly more than 10%. Okay, you can see it's minus 53 here. It should be just a little bit higher interest rate. And over here, we can see that it's going to be between 40 and 45%. So probably about halfway in between. So about 42.5%. Which one do you use? At 15% you accept here, you reject here. So we don't know. And this is one of the problems with these non-conventional cash flows. When you, use, when you use NPV, you always get the correct solution. So let me put this in here, our required return. Let's use 
15%. And let's see whether we would do this project or not. And we can use our cash flow worksheet. And let me just clear that. And so our first cash flow is 90,000. And don't forget to hit enter. Our next cash flow is 132,000. And then we have a cash flow of 100,000. Enter. Whoop. What did I do? Oh, here's where I made my mistake. Maybe you noticed when I was punching it in, I put in, I tried to put that um, 100,000 in for frequency. Frequency was one. Okay, so be a little bit careful there. Uh, so the second cash flow is 100,000. Okay, it wouldn't let me put in a frequency of 100,000. Good thing too. And the, I already had frequency, I almost did it again. And then the last cash, cash flow is 150,000. Enter. Okay, and then we just click over to NPV. We put in the interest rate. We said we're going to use a, a required return of 15%. And let's compute NPV. And in this case, NPV is equal to $1,769.54. We'll skip the pennies. It's greater than zero, so we accept the project. If we're going to use internal rate of return, we're going to have to make some different assumptions in order to do the calculation. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video.